In the world of video games, there are many myths and mythological creatures that one will come across. Some of them are just random characters you kill, while others have a backstory to them. However, most video games do not come close in terms of disturbingness, such as one game that we call Resident Evil. In this video game series, a lovely company called the Umbrella Organization has committed some very, let's just say, interesting experiments on the people of this world. Here are a few notes that were written by some of the residents of the first game. Enjoy. Keeper's Diary A journal of a resident of the Spencer Mansion and his slow transformation into a zombie. May 9th, 1998 Played poker tonight with Scott and Elias from security and Steve from research. Steve was the big winner, but I think he was cheating. <laughs> Scumbag. May 10th, 1998. One of the higher-ups assigned me to take care of a new creature. It looks like a skinned gorilla. Feeding instructions were to give it live animals. When I threw in a pig, the creature seemed to play with it, tearing off the pig's legs and pulling out the guts before it actually started eating. May 11th, 1998. At around 5 a.m., Scott woke me up, scared the shit out of me too. He was wearing a protective suit. He handed me another one and told me to put it on. Said there'd been an accident in the basement lab. I just knew something like this would happen. Those bastards in research never sleep, even on holidays. May 12, 1998. I've been wearing the damn spacesuit since yesterday. My skin's getting grimy and feels itchy all over. The goddamn dogs have been looking at me funny. So I decided not to feed them today. Screw them. May 13th, 1998. Went to the infirmary because my back is all swollen and feels itchy. They put a big bandage on it and told me I didn't need to wear the suit anymore. All I want to do is sleep. May 14th, 1998. Found another big blister on my foot. This morning, I ended up dragging my foot all the way to the dog's pen. They were quiet all day, which is weird. Then I realized some of them had escaped. Maybe this is their way of getting back at me for not feeding them the last three days. If anybody finds out, I'll have my head handed to me. May 16th, 1998. Rumors going around that a researcher who tried to escape the estate last night was shot. My entire body feels hot and itchy. And I'm sweating all over now. I scratched the swelling of my arm and a piece of rotten flesh just dropped off. What the hell's happening to me? May 19th, 1998. Fever gone, but itchy. Today hungry and eat doggy food. May 21st. 1998. Itchy. Itchy Scott K. Ugly Face. So killed him. Tasty. Suicide note. June 22nd, 1998. I 
had to do it. We ran from those things, helping each other to survive, but Robert started to show the symptoms. I had to do it. Those damn things are pure evil. There was no other way. He would have done the same if it were for the other way around. After I put him out of his misery, I had to just put him in the bathroom. Now I'm probably the last one. How could this happen? I'll never forgive myself for being part of this project. Eventually, I'll get what's coming to me, though. There's no way to escape from this. Nuthouse, it's just a matter of time now. Everything is set. All I need is a little courage to get it done. Knowing that I'll leave many things undone is regret beyond words. But this is better than just waiting to turn into one of them. Please understand. And at least let me end my life as a person. There's a message on the back. Linda, please forgive me. Crumpled Memo Today, Sir Spencer told me to hide something where no one could find it. Well, I had this idea. I figured if I could somehow have it protected by a dangerous animal, like the vicious canine that lives here, no one would be able to get near it. As far as I can tell, the mutt is always hanging around the second floor balcony on the west side of the Terex. And he ought to come running at the sound of a dog whistle. This is where you come in. The thing is, I reckon you're the only person that I can get near the damn dog without risking a serious mauling. Which means only you can put this collar on him. The object that Sir Spencer wants hidden is concealed inside. You're the only person I can trust with this. Of course, you'll get something out of it as well. Remember that certain item that you've always wanted to get a hold of. Well, in exchange for your service, I just might be able to get it for you. This could work out well for the both of us. John Tolman Trevor's Diary, November 24th, 1967 Eleven days have passed since arriving on this estate, how did I end up like this? A guy in a lab coat came with a plate of skimpy meal and said to me, Sorry to put you through this, but it's for security reasons. That's when it hit me. It all makes sense now. There are only two people that know the secret of this mansion. Sir Spencer and myself, if they kill me, Sir Spencer will be the only person that knows the secret. But for what purpose? It doesn't matter now. It's too dangerous here. My family... I hope they're alright. I've decided to escape. Jessica, Lisa, I pray you are safe. November 26, 1967 how could I be so careless? I lost my favorite lighter, the one Jessica gave me for my birthday. Now, it's going to be that much harder to get out of this dark place. November 13th. The date that when my fate was sealed. My aunt was hospitalized just three days before that. Jessica and Lisa said that they were going to visit her. I wish I could be there with them. But wait, even as I'm writing my memory is coming back to me more vividly, just before I passed out I remember the men in the lab coats said something like, most likely your family is already. I pray for their safety. November 27th, 
1967. Somehow, I managed to get out of that room, but getting out of this mansion won't be as easy. I have to get past all the booby traps, tiger eyes, gold emblem. I have to try and remember for my own sake. November 29th, 1967. I can't get out. I have tried every possible way to escape, but only to be faced with the reality that I'm trapped. I've been everywhere. The laboratory with the large glass tubes filled with formidahide. And those dark, wet, and eerie caves. What can I do? At first, I didn't want to believe my eyes, but that familiar high-heeled shoe in the corridor, it was like reflex. One name came to my mind, Jessica. I don't want to believe they share the same fate as me. No, I can't give up hope. I have to hope they're alive. November 30th, 1967. I haven't had anything to eat or drink for the past few days. I feel like I'm going crazy. Why is this happening to me? Why do I have to die like this? I was too obsessed with designing this ghastly mansion. I should have known better. November 31st, 1967. It was a dark and damp underground tunnel and another dead end. But even in the darkest, Something caught my eye. Carefully, I lit my last match. I had to see what it was. A grave. But deeply engraved into the stone was my name. George Trevor. At that instant, it all became clear to me. Those bastards knew from the beginning that I'd die here, and I fell right into their trap. But it's too net late now. I'm losing it. Everything is becoming so far away. Jessica, Lisa, forgive me. Because of my ego, I got both of you involved. In this whole damn conspiracy, forgive me, my God. Justify my death in exchange for your safety. George Trevor. There's something handwritten. It's not dated. Nothing's changed. I've never thought that this room I designed as an experiment would pay off like this. I can hide here safely for a while because nobody knows about the secret behind this painting. Not even Sir Spencer. Painting of a mansion in the back of the art room. Botany. Uses of medicinal herbs. It is a well-known fact that there exist many plants that are credited with medicinal healing powers. Since ancient times, mankind has been healing wounds and diseases using various plants. In this book, we will sample three herbs that are native of the Arclay Mountains and briefly outline each of their medicinal herbs. Each Oh. has a distinct color and a distinct medicinal quality. The green herb recovers physical strength. The blue herb neutralizes natural toxins. However, the red herb has no real effect by itself. We have found that mixing green and red herbs results in a magnificent effect. We will outline the effects of red herbs when mixed with other herbs when we have more data. Meanwhile, feel free to experiment on your own, for true knowledge is best acquired through own experience. Family Picture and Notes A record of the disturbing events that happened to the Trevor family specifically. There's something written on the back. November 10th, 1967 Progenitor virus administered. Jessica, administered virus type A. Plasmolizing 
of tissue during cell activation. Virus fusion negative. Action disposed. Lisa administered virus type B. Plasmalizing of tissue during cell activation. Virus fusion positive but delayed fusion. Body modification observed constant results. Status continued protective observation. George, action terminated, November 30th, 1967. There's a journal left by someone. November 14th, 1967. I feel dizzy after that shot they gave me. I don't see mom. Where did they take her? She promised that she would help me escape. Did she escape alone and leave me behind? November 15th, 1967. I found mom. We ate together. I was very happy, but she was a fake. Not my real mom. Same face, but different inside. Have to find mom. Have to give face back to mother. I got mom's face back. Nobody can have my mom except me. I attach her face to me so she doesn't go away. Because mom said when I meet her without her face. November 17th, 197. From inside box sent of mommy. Maybe true mother there. Stone box hard, it hurt, steel rope in the way, can't see mother because four stones. 19. Daddy attached first, mom attached scunned. Inside red, inside light and hurt. Not true mom, we read. Don't know dad. Um, um, again. When you accept the moment, she moves no more. She's screaming. Why? This is it. Wants to be with her. For Mom, where? I miss you. It's a letter. To my Lisa. Day by day, I can feel my consciousness drifting further and further away. The shots given to me by men in white clothes made some of mommy's itching go away. Today, they gave me another shot, saying it was nutrition. When they give me the shots, mommy can think straight, but mommy's shocked and sad because mommy's unable to think of you all the time. Mommy's afraid. Afraid of forgetting everything, especially the memories of you and Daddy. What your faces look like. How we used to be together. They're all starting to disappear into somewhere dark in my mind. Oh, Lisa, I wish I could touch your face. I hold you in my arms right now so that I can hold on to our wonderful memories of you and daddy. Lisa, we can't stay here any longer. We have to escape. Listen to me, Lisa. Our chance to escape is the next time we go to that lab together. We'll both pretend that we are both unconscious and when that man in white clothes is off guard, that will be our chance. When we're on the outside, let's look for Daddy together. Okay, sweetie? Be strong, Lisa. November 13, 1967. Jessica Trevor. If you enjoyed this and would like to hear more stories like these, please go to www.youtube.com slash the voice of nightmares. While you're there checking out all my fantastic videos, don't forget to hit the little subscribe button, then hit the notification bell just so you know whenever I upload. Also, you can follow me on social media sites such as Twitter, 
Instagram, Amino, Mr. Creepypasta Amino, Creepypasta Amino, and last but not least, coming in 2019, my very own website called thevoiceofnightmares.com. Also, all art, music, and stories are owned by the respected authors. As always, links are available in the description below.